Okay, we're going to get started. Thank you for joining our webinar, Introduction to Wisis Agility WMS for SAP Business One. We are recording this session. We'll be sending out the recorded uh, uh, video um, for all the attendees and people who registered. My name is Scott Long. I'm the uh, Director of Product Marketing here at Wisis. And we have our senior consultant also with us, Aaron Armadaris. We're going to just, uh, like I said, do a little 30-minute overview of our products and our software. And then at the end of the session, I'll open it up for questions and answers if anybody has any uh, anything they'd like to uh, make comments or get some more information on. So we're going to talk about the products. We're going to show you our new Agility 360, which is Android-based, show you the software, and, and talk about any questions that you might have. Wysis has been around for quite a long time. We are certified in both uh, SQL and HANA. We have quite a few customers on 9.3 and a fair amount on 10.0, both HANA and SQL. We have um, a few different products that we're going to be uh, going over today. Um, Agility Essentials, our desktop, desktop explorer, design tools, fulfillment, and palettes. I won't go into a lot of detail on those, um, not for this session. And upcoming agility shipping, we'll have separate sessions on that as the, as the product hits uh, ramp up. So our agility essentials is really all the standard SAP Business One transactions. Um, so really anything that has to do with inventory, right? Purchasing, sales, the inventory transaction, production, and so forth. And we use the native Business One tables. So we don't have a separate inventory system, separate in item master, separate you know batches and bins. All that's controlled within standard SAP. Also included with Agility Essentials is our label designer and our inventory allocations. We have the capability to integrate these labels and crystal reports in the transactions on the handheld device. We have Agility Palettes, which allows one to build license plates and move product around um, just by a pallet number, including doing cycle counting and physical inventory and you know pallet letdowns and so forth. And then we have Agility Fulfillment, which lets one ship pallets. Uh, you can pack specific cartons. We track items within each package container, and that gets carried over to the sales order delivery uh, packing slip. So if we can actually identify for your advanced ship notifications in the case that you're doing EDI, what products are in what specific packages. We have Agility Desktop, which is really like a workspace or a way to view your information in SAP a little differently. And these desktop grids could also um, do transactions. We, ha we have uh, our design tools, and this is what we use to develop our software. And uh, most companies do purchase at least a professional level, which includes our design tools. But these allow one to make changes or even create new forms that show up on the mobile devices and on the screens. So if you have some user-defined fields or tables or specific logic that you want to incorporate, that's how we do it. We also have the ability, like I mentioned earlier, to integrate labels and crystal reports. And then you can also chain multiple transactions together. So you can do a PO goods receipt production order issue. You could PO receipt to an inventory transfer request. So pretty much any transaction in business one that's available through the DI API could be chained together for ease of use and, and streamlining your processes even quicker. And then we use these design tools as well to create these desktop grids that, I'm, that I mentioned and uh, that I'll, I'll be showing you. So let's take a look at the software. We can run our software inside of SAP. We can also run it outside of SAP, but you need at least an indirect user to run it. So if you already have a professional or limited user, you can, you can run our applications. If you don't, you would need to at least work with your partner on purchasing a indirect license. So just to show you um, uh, just, a, just a few things here inside, like some administrative type activities, this is where we tie documents, which are labels or crystal reports, to transactions. So in this case, for my purchase order receiving transactions, I have a goods receipt label. And these labels could be set up to be run for specific items, item groups. In the case of sales orders and packing slips, they could be run by cert for certain customers. So when you do a transaction, uh, maybe a, a delivery on a mobile device, you can actually have it print a crystal packing slip you know, to a nearby printer. And then you can also create a bunch of user-defined um, uh, transactions and, and labels and so forth. You can also control what functions a user gets to uh, see on their mobile device 
and I have two mobile screens called up. I'm using an emulator to make it easier, and I also have our Agility 360 side by side. So this is our new Agility 360. This is our traditional um, handheld screen. And on both, they, they both work similar. Obviously, we use the Android technology here. And then we can also invoke signature and photo capture. On each mobile device, the users can put in defaults for this specific mobile device or this specific user on what, say, what warehouses there are they using, what are some of the default bins that they have set up, um, how do they want their menu to look, and even language. So if you have um, folks out in the warehouse that's, you know, speak another language, you can switch their experience on their mobile device to a different language. So what I want to first do is a, a goods receipt PO to sort of show you um, how, our, how our software works. And this out of the way a little bit. I'll use the legacy solution first. I'm going to do a goods receipt PO. I already have uh, my documents scanned. I'm, I'm sorry, my documents um, barcoded. So I, I could scan, you know, the order number. I could then scan the item. I have it set to go to the dock. Say I'm going to receive five pieces. I can also scan the cust uh, the vendor's UPC or maybe another number that's on the box, and it'll translate to our number. And let's go ahead and receive all 11. At this point, I can see my unposted transactions. I can delete them. I could, uh, in this case, go ahead and post. So I have this set up where it prints a label for each of the items. And obviously, you can have control over this label um, on how many print based maybe on cartons or pallets or what have you. But as soon as I did the post, it updated SAP. So it did the goods receipt PO. So it's immediate. If we look at that same transaction, except using our mobile device. So now I, I have an Agility 360 PO goods receipt, and I'll show you why here in a second. But I can scan um, my order. I could scan the item. It knows how much was previously received. I can go ahead and scan the next item. And in this case, we could have photo turned on or I have signature capture. And now I'm gonna do the post, just like on the other emulator, I'm printing the labels and it updates SAP Business One immediately. And if I look at this second goods receipt of the two items I received, in the attachments is our signature capture or in the attachments would be the photo. So we can do the signature and photo capture in any document that SAP Business One's API connects to, which are just about just about all of them. So if we want, um, let's take a quick look at our, our label designer that's included with our essentials. I think you get about a dozen or two, uh, two labels. You know, here, here's our label designer. You can include um, whatever field you want. What drives this is a simple SQL query. So anything in your system, item master, item warehouse, uh, purchase order, business partner, whatever, anything you put into that select statement, then that field uh, becomes available to use in the label designer. So all the standard business one transactions are here, miscellaneous issues, receipts, if we wanted to transfer from one warehouse to another, if I wanted to simply do a bin transfer of something I previously received, and I want to say it's coming from that dock, and I want to put it away in my, put it away in my regular location, and I want to you know go ahead and move all 47. And again, that updates SAP immediately as soon as something like that happens. We have a handful of ways to, to do sales order uh, deliveries and picking and so forth. Um, what I wanted to point out is we do use the SAP inventory counting. So if you have an inventory counting document um, created, then we have a few different ways to do our inventory counts and it immediately updates the inventory counting sheet and then that can be reviewed for variances and posted as needed. We also have our desktop. And what I wanted to show you is a sales order batch management grid. So again, we're looking at the data a little bit differently here. And these are just SQL queries driving this. But we have the ability to then have different layouts. And each user could have a different layout. And this could be modified on the fly. Uh, maybe you want to select all the uh, UPS orders, you know, group those all together um, by date, by reference, what have you. 
I could take, and let's group all my orders here, and then each layout could be saved by user. We do have inventory allocations turned on, so somebody could see, here I have a green alert that shows me that I have quantity on hand allocated for everything that's open. Something that's not fully allocated, I have the ability to go in and look at my supplies, and I could see, I could really ship 176, I have 50 that are coming in on a transfer request, and then I'm sure the rest of them. So right here, somebody in the warehouse could identify, maybe they just wanna pick 100% ready orders, and you could also put some, some of your own logic in here. Since this is a process grid, we can also print reports. I can create this SAP Pick and Pack Manager pick list, either uh, create a pick list for each individual order, or put all the orders on one pick list. Again, standard SAP. We have hyperlinks where one could actually go in and uh, take a look at the order if, if business one is connected. And then in this case, we have a child grid or detail grid that moves along with what's highlighted. And you know we have a lot of uh, sales related grids, uh, production grids, production resource grid, which could really be used as a resource or work center dispatch report. Again, I have some user defined fields here. Um, also, these grids could be projected on another display and have it automatically refresh. So that sales order grid, open pick lists, these production resources, this could be projected onto a, uh, say, a screen out in the warehouse or the shop or even customer service. And then we have a calendar version of our desktop. So if I wanted to uh, look at my data, here's my production orders. Uh, two production orders scheduled, and I have the child grid or detail grid that moves along with it. And this doesn't even have to relate to WMS, right? This could be an orders booked. This could be orders shipped. This could be dollar amounts, anything you want it to be. It's just a SQL query. On the um, production side, we support the business one production transactions. So if I look at my, uh, my mobile device, we have separate production. I could produce just do my production receipts from here. And again, I have my transaction, my paperwork coded. I can go ahead and you know receive two. As soon as I do the receipt, I get a label. It updates SAP immediately. I could look up my orders here. And again, this is a SQL query. If it was batch tracked or serialized, obviously you'd be prompted for that information. If you were manually issuing components, we can handle that. And then here, our production backfill is a good example of our composite transactions where we chain transactions together. So I could take and put in an item that has a bill of material in this case, and I want to say, let's make seven of them. I get a label, and what this just did was created a production order, released it, everything was set to back flush. We completed seven, and then we closed the production order. So if you have an, ex that's an example of how we can uh, chain transactions together. And in this case, if you just told somebody, hey, go out and assemble seven of these or nine of these, you know, you don't necessarily have to create a production order first. They could just start recording production on their own using this function. Where I want to look at, in this case, pick list analytics, I have a filter here where I can select a date range. I can look at all my pick list by picker and date range. And again, you can do your filters and stuff that I showed you before, but we could see over that date range, they pick seven orders. So you could start using this for some metrics and some analytics. Looking at the, the sales order side, we have a few different ways that sales orders could be picked and shipped out of the system. So if I take a look at one sales order here I have set up, and again, I, I have this set to where I have uh, a crystal report with everything barcoded. So that's what, you know, using just a standard sales order delivery, I can go ahead and, and uh, you know, scan the items. What bins is, is this coming from? And on this mobile device, when I hit post, it immediately does a sales order delivery. Now, in this case, I just did a partial. I'd like to show you real quick our fulfillment where we can track uh, packages. So I have a sales order that was previously shipped out. Um, I can see I have the history of the cartons. And if I look at the delivery order, and look at the packing slip, I could see each of those carton numbers and what's in each carton. And this is what would get carried over to the uh, advanced ship notification in EDI. 
So we have a few different ways to, to do the sales order shipping. What I'm going to show you here is how we use the SAP Pick and Pack Manager pick list. So I have an order, a couple items on it. I have a pick list that I created. And this pick list, again, I have it uh, pre-barcoded if I'm going to be using the paperwork. I can also do this paperless. And I'm going to do what we call directed sales order picking. If I know the pick list number, I can key it in. I can also just do a lookup of open pick lists. And here, since I'm using the directed option, this is going to guide me through the warehouse based on the rules that we have set up in the SAP warehouse master for bins. Again, I'd validate uh, the item that I just went to. The bin, I'm double checking it. I could also put a different bin in. And I'm going to say I picked one. It's going to take me to the next bin. I'm going to validate that item, that bin, put it in. And then I'm going to go ahead and create the delivery. So at this point, it closed the pick list out, updated the sales order, and created my delivery order. We can also we also support multiple sales orders on the pick list, just like SAP does. So now I can maybe I look up my open picks. I see I have uh, one here. And now this starts taking me to bin A11, and it's telling me to, uh, to scan item F1. It's telling me to validate the bin I'm in and pick one for this order. Now it's telling me to stay here because I have another order that needs this item. So envision you would have a cart, and uh, in this case, I, maybe I have four um, cartons one for each order, and I'm putting them right into, the, right, into, right into the carton as I go. And again, I have another order. It's asking for the same item. And as soon as I post each transaction, it's updating the pick list. So even if I stop, somebody could see where I'm at. So if I was just going to pick partial, I could hit delivery, and the system, in this case, would create three delivery orders, one for each sales order. So there's different ways, uh, depending on needs, um, that we could pick sales orders. So this concludes the general overview. What we're going to do now is I'll, I'll, I'll display our contact information. So if anybody wants to contact Aaron or myself to get a more detailed demonstration or to answer some more questions, we're available to do that. And I'm going to stop recording. Thank everybody for their time, and I'm going to be sending out this recorded demonstration. Have a great day.